Hey everyone, Flavin here. In a previous video, I showed you guys how to do saving with player prefs, which is a simple to use key pair value saving method that's built into Unity. In this video, we're going to be tackling something a little more robust and complex, which is binary serialization. If you've never heard of that before and it sounds kind of scary, well, it did to me at first as well, but don't worry, we'll walk through it and while the code might look a little bit confusing, it's not very long. So as I like to do at the start of all these videos, let's take a look at what we're going to do from a conceptual point of view and then we'll jump into Unity. So let's say I have a game and I've got a bunch of strings and integers that I would like to save down so that I can use that information between sessions of play. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to handle this in two different classes. The first class is going to house all the information from the game that I wish to save. And the second class is going to do all of the logic. It's going to take all of that information that I want to save, it's going to serialize it, and then it's going to put it somewhere on a file on my device. Then when we want to read that information, we're just going to be doing the same process in reverse. We're going to start with the file. We're then going to read that file into our game. We're going to deserialize that information and put it back into the class, which held all the information for our game. And then our game is just going to read that and get updated by the data that we loaded. Hopefully I put a really cool infographic here and that all just made sense, uh, but if not, don't worry, we're going to go through it step by step right now. Okay, so I'm over here in Unity and you can see that I've got this little mini game set up. All this really is, is just a simulator where I can apply some stats to a character, I can name myself, so I'm just going to call myself Flavane, and I can apply some stats here, and you can see I've got 10 points and I can't go over, just some simple stat numbers. And then we've got a class, I can change through these, just some basic fantasy RPG classes. Let's say I pick mage, and then I have this save and load function. So we're gonna be writing both of these. So right now all I've got here is just a debug.log statement that says it hasn't been written yet, and the same with the load. So obviously right now, if I were to stop this game and start it again, none of the information that I've just entered is gonna come back into my game. We're just gonna be starting from scratch again, and I'm back at having to fill everything out. So at the end of this, we're going to have all that information saved down into a file and then we're going to read that back into our game and update all of these values with whatever we've inserted. I've also got an ID here, but this ID isn't going to be used until we probably do a JSON video after this. Um, so you don't need to worry about that for now, but basically it's just a random number. So right now all of the logic for our game is housed in one script called Game Manager that's just attached to this Game Manager game object. So I'm going to open that one up. And as you can see here, we've got a public variable for our class. I've just created a static game manager class. We've got the information that we actually are going to want to save down. And we're going to load this one, this information back in as well. So we've got a string, a couple ints, and then we've got some UI elements. We aren't going to need to worry about saving any of this down because it's just being populated by the information that we've got here. Just running through this quite quickly, I've got an awake that is going to be setting this static game manager instance. I've got an ID that's just randomly generated. We're doing a fixed update just to update some of our UI elements. An increment button, which just has a bit of logic to make sure that you aren't assigning more points than you need. And a decrement button, which is the exact opposite of our increment button. I've then got a change class. That's that little text element in here where I'm just clicking these arrows. Then we've got our save game button and our load game button. So right now they don't do anything but obviously we're going to be putting some in some logic for them. So we're going to jump back over into Unity and I'm going to be creating two scripts. The first script, I'm just going to call character data. So that's going to house all of the information that we are actually wanting to save down. And then a second script that I'm going to call serializer. We'll open up character data first because that one's going to be quite simple. Now every class in Unity generally derives from mono behavior, but because we're not actually attaching this to any game objects or anything, we're just using it to hold some information that we want to pass on. We're going to be removing this mono behavior and we're also going to have to add a system.serializable. Now what this does is it allows this class to be serialized. So you don't need to know really its inner workings, you just need to know that if you want to serialize something, in this case the whole class, we just put system serializable at the top. It is also possible to create in here a public int, and I could call this, I don't know, cats, and I can add to this a serializable field. Now, what that would do is instead of serializing the whole class, we can just serialize this one field so that I could save that down. Now, in this case, because we're creating just a separate class to hold all the information we want to save, we're just going to serialize the entire class. 
<laughs> I obviously don't need cats, so I'm gonna get rid of that as well. Now we aren't going to need the start or update methods. We're just gonna need to begin with our variables. So I'm just gonna cut and paste them over, but they're basically these ones from over here. So all of our public ints and everything. And we'll paste them into here. So this is the information we wanna save. Our ID, our character's name, the class count, the points that we have to spend, and then our strength, dex, int, and vitality. Okay, so the only method we're actually gonna implement into this class is what is known as a constructor. Now, if you haven't worked outside of Unity before, you might not have used these, but really a constructor is just a way to initialize a class and give it some values at the same time. So we're gonna be defining what all of these values are the moment we create that class. So I'm gonna call this a public character data. You'll notice it has the same name, but this time it's gonna accept game manager and we'll call this game progress. So effectively, we're gonna be setting all of these values from the game progress that gets passed in of our game manager. And you'll see this all come into work a bit later, but for now, we're just gonna type in ID. So we're gonna be setting each of these values here. I might actually just skip over this after I do the first one, but we're gonna be getting this from game progress and we'll be getting the ID from there. So we'll do the same for all of them. Okay, so now we can see that we're gonna be setting all the values for each of these here from the whatever game manager that we pass into this function. That's all we're gonna to have to do for this character data script. We're now gonna jump into our serializer and write the meaty part of this. So I'm gonna open up my serializer class and there's a few things that we're gonna need at the top of this. I'm gonna get rid of all this system collection stuff and we're gonna be using system.io. We're also gonna be using system.runtime.serialization.formatters.binary. Okay, that was a little bit of a long one, but we got there. And then we're gonna be editing this again. So once again, this isn't actually gonna be a game object in our game, it's just gonna be another class. So we're gonna be removing this deriving from mono behavior. And this is also gonna be a public static class, just so that we can call it from everywhere a bit easier. We aren't gonna need any start methods or update methods for this one. We're just gonna have two methods. We're gonna have a save player and a load player. So I'm gonna create a public static void save player. That's gonna take in the game manager and we'll call that progress again. And we'll also create a public static character data this time. And load progress is what we're gonna call it. So just an important differentiation there. Make sure they're static. Make sure that you're pulling in the character data into your load and make sure that you're passing in the game manager into your save. When we're working with a binary formatter, we have to define that we're working with a binary formatter. We'll just call that one formatter and it's a new binary formatter. We then need to determine where we're actually saving our file. So I'm just gonna call this string, we'll name it path and it's gonna be application.persistentDataPath. Now all that is, is just a predetermined path that every device will have. I think on computer it goes to app data. We'll have a look at it a bit later, I'll show you where the file is. But we're just gonna be going to that location and then we're just gonna add a brand new thing that I'm just gonna call uh, test binary and we also get to make up our own file type so I'm going to call that dot flavane. Now whenever we're working with files we're generally working with file streams. All a file stream is is a way for you to be able to write information to a file. Whenever you're using a file stream you generally want to open a connection to the file stream so basically open the file that you're going to be writing to. You're then going to write all your information into it and then you're going to close that file stream which is sort of the same as closing the file down. So I'm just gonna call this one stream. We're gonna make a new file stream and we need to give it the path that we want it to go to. We've defined that up here. So that's just gonna be this path that we've defined here. And then we just need to give it a file mode. And that file mode is going to be create because we're gonna be making a new file there. There are some other file modes in here. You could also be using append, um, which will just add information to it. If you were doing something like creating a log, that's a good way to do it. But in this case, because we're just saving over our information each time, we're just gonna be using create. Then we're gonna do the actual writing of the information. So we're gonna say, we wanna be putting in our character data because remember that was the actual data that we care about. And we're gonna say new character data and we're gonna pass in that, that game progress. So you can see we've passed in the game manager into this function and then we're passing that progress, that game manager directly into our character data. And all that's really doing is just filling out this information here. So it's just setting what the IDs and everything that we wanna actually save is. 
The next step is serializing that information. So we're going to say formatter.serialize stream data. It's kind of self-explanatory. It serializes the information in the stream. Uh, and then we're just going to close the stream. And that's it. That's, that's saving in a nutshell. So that's all that we needed to do to save information. So we create a formatter, define where we want to save it, create the file, get the data, write the data to the file, and close the file. Okay, so you can see we've already got this error message here for load progress, but that's because it's expecting us to return a character data. Whereas most of our functions return a void, this one's returning a character data. So we're gonna eventually need to return some information out of this. Now, before we do anything, we need to first define again where it's actually gonna get the information from. So I'm gonna say string path, and we're gonna give it that same application dot persistent data path that we had before. And again, mine's gonna be called test binary dot flavane. Then we're gonna do a quick check to make sure that there is actually a save file there because if you're trying to load it for the first time without ever having a save file, it's gonna throw an error. So we just wanna handle that. So we're gonna say if file.exists at the path that we want it at, then we're okay to actually deseri deserialize the information. Okay, so again, I'm going to create a binary formatter. We're gonna call this formatter. This will be a new binary formatter. This time we don't need to get our path because we've already got it up here. So we're going to say file stream, we'll call that stream is equal to new file stream at the path that we've got. And this time when we go file mode, we're going to say open instead of create. We're then going to read and put all of that data into our character data game object. So we're going to say character data, which we'll just call data for now. We're going to be going to the formatter and we're going to deserialize that information. We need to give it the stream because that's where the information is coming from. And then we're going to have to cast it into a character data because we have to know what type of data is coming out of this stream. So we say character data is coming out and then we can save that into a variable called data. That's it. We've read our data. It's now inside of where we need it to be. So that's great. All we're going to do is we're going to say stream.close. We might throw a quick debug.log on here just to say data loaded successfully. And then we are going to return the data because remember I set up here, this is expecting a return of information. So this time we're gonna be returning our data. It's still got an error for us because there's a situation we haven't handled, which is when we don't have a valid file at that path. So we're just gonna say debug.log save file is not found at, and then we might just put a quick location in there. So we'll say at the path location that we were searching. And then let's just return null instead. So you'll see we've got no errors now. That is great. We are almost done. So right now what we've done is we've written the methods that are going to both save and load the data. But when it's loading it, it's loading it all into the character data. So the only step that we have left is to update our game manager with the information that came from character data. So that's only two more methods. So we're gonna jump back to the game method here. We're gonna scroll down to where we've got save game button and load game button. And we're gonna get rid of these. And in order to call this, the only thing that we need to do is we need to say serializer, which is this here. That's the class that we created. And we wanna say save player and we're gonna be passing in, it requires a game manager. And obviously we're inside of the game manager right now. So we're just gonna be passing in this. That's save done. On the load side, it's a little more complicated. So overall we need to call the deserialization process. Then we need to make sure that the data isn't null. Then we need to override our values and then we need to update our UI in our game. We're going to say character data, which we'll just call data again, is equal to serializer dot load progress and remember this one didn't take in any variables so that's fine on its own then we're going to perform a check so we've got the data now it's now called data in here so all we have to do is just load our values in from data so we're going to say if data is equal to null this is to make sure that we actually do have data if we don't have that 
We're just going to put some default values in so it can still load some stuff. So I'm just going to load in points to spend as 10, strength as 1, intelligence as 1, dexterity as 1, vitality as 1. And then in the scenario where we do have data, we're going to be overriding it with the local values that we've got. Our ID is equal to data.id, and this is going to be quite similar to the way we did the previous. In this case, I've got a text value that holds my name. It's just going to be data.character name. Class count is going to be coming from data.class count. And I will skip to the end of this so you don't have to watch all of this. Okay, so now we've loaded our data into this game manager script. The only thing we need to do is update our UI. So I've got a few text to strings here and everything else is on an update method already. So I won't need this fixed update. So I won't need to do them all. I'll just need to do the text that goes into our strength int dexterity and vitality. So I'm gonna hit save on this. I'm gonna jump back into our game. And once that's compiled, we're just gonna go over to our load button and you'll see here that I've got game manager load game. And on the save button, I've got the game manager dot save game button. So if I hit play, let's hope we don't have any errors. We've got a game that randomly loads. I'm going to call myself Flavin and I'll give myself maybe five strength, three int, two dex, and we'll put the rest into vitality. And I think that sounds like a paladin and I will hit save. Now we haven't put any console uh, logs on here at all, or debug.logs, should I say. So that doesn't actually tell us anything, but let's just test to make sure that that works. So I'm going to stop the game, load the game, and we can see here that it's reset the game, but if I hit load, I get my name back, I get my class back, I get all of my stats back, and I, you can see that I've spent them all. It's also loaded me to the ID that I was at the time as well. We also had that data loaded successfully um, that we put in there as well. The last thing that I wanted to show you was what it actually looks like inside of the file. So I'm going to go to app data and let's hope I can remember the location of this. But inside of app data, we go to local low and I haven't actually saved this under any kind of company name. So right now it's just falling into default company. And then my application is called test binary saving. And you can see I've got my test binary dot flavane here. And I've got a Flavain file, which sounds ridiculous. But if I were to right click this and open with, just have a look and let's open it with a notepad for now. And inside of here, this is what the data actually looks like. So it's not particularly readable, but um, there is a way you can deserialize this outside of an application. So just be aware that obviously this is a text file. It's very easy for me to edit these values and save them. So this is why cloud saving is very important because obviously your data can be quite hackable if someone can just go in and edit these values. Um, they would need to deserialize the information, but there's websites that can do that quite simply. And that is the full process. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe the video and I'll see you guys next time. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to Solomon for supporting me over on Patreon. If you'd like to do the same, it's Patreon slash Flavane. Thanks guys.